It's a blast off, yeah. Welcome to the Live Love Lounge, everyone. Hello, darlings, and welcome to our front room. Welcome this... to the beautiful people, and welcome to you. Yeah. All in pink. He walked in, and I said, you look like a big warning in my big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. Oh, so we're starting, Deirdre. <laughs> From the offset, we're going to go at it, are we, Deirdre? A great big fat pink warning. <laughs> so, so my name is, but I can rock pink. I'm totally cool Hello, with pink. Darlings. Um, Emma Daggers is sat next to me, the beautiful, the charismatic, the speaker, teacher, preacher, and all round seeker. And this is passionate Peter, Mr. Pete Yarwood. It stuck with me that one, didn't it? Yeah. Years yeah. ago, we did the training course and we had to think of a word that describes us with the same letter of our first name. So I think we should do that on the group. And I do. I do. So, so, so I'm going to. Uh, just kick it off tonight Go for with, it. with with that introduction and I'm going to say you will never see a vicar that is sicker than <laughs> nice. our next guest. Well, hey. Tell us your name and think of a word beginning with the first letter of your name that describes you. Oh, blimey. So uh, I'm Mick Fleming, Pastor Mick Fleming, and uh, I'm mental. <laughs> really, mental then. Mick. Mental Mick. Brilliant. Okay, um, and we've got Andrew Wright. Hello, there. Awesome Dan. Andy. Awesome Andy in the house. No, you can't think of... Well, you can't. I can't. Yeah, well, can make I well I'll, I'll probably struggle for things to say about myself. I'll get a bit bashful about that. I'll have awesome. Yeah, that, I'll live that today. That's all right. Thank you for what, that. What that saved me a job. Uh, what's your T-shirt saying, Andy? It says, don't forget about the songs that saved your life, right? Yes. So one was Joy Division. One's the oh, yeah. Smiths and the other one's the Cure. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're blessed because Andrew's Andy's a colleague of ours, isn't he? Absolutely. And uh, you're going to share a little bit about the work you do later on, aren't you, Andy? Yeah, thank you. Thanks Look for awesome. coming on, Andy, as well. No, it's a pleasure. Going on. You're, yeah, you're I appreciate that and thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, um, let's go with. The yeah. Purple Rooms. What? Uh, yeah. You've got to think of oh, it. My name's Dean and I'm dangerous. Dangerous. <laughs> Tell us your name and then what's that the first letter of your name that describes yourself? Or not, as the case may be. So I think. Jason, just. Let's go make your Purple Rooms, come ah. in loud. Do you read us over? Hey, hey, you right? So tell us your name and think of a word that describes who you are with the first letter of your name. My name's Dean and I'm dangerous. Oh. <laughs> dangerous Dean in the house. Dangerous yeah, Dean. That's the one. Dangerous Dean in the rooms. Zooming in from the purple rooms. And it's our magician's hand there. Show us your hand again, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the room's in the house once again. Awesome. Okay, let's get, uh, let's pick on Karen Brown. Yes, oh, I can think of a lot of names for you, Karen, beginning with K. Well, one of these young lads here said, just say kangaroo. So I don't know where that's <laughs> going. I'll go with kind. kind. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love Karen. That kind is, Karen. That is true. Yeah, you are kind. Good to see you all. Good it's... to see you too, Mrs. I like them curtains. Oh, yeah. Half price at Preston. Were they? Don't know. <laughs> yeah. I work right. That's where we're going tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Great to have you back, Karen. Yes, it Good is. Good to see and, you. Uh, up, update from Blackpool as well. Okay. It? Okay. Sorry, I'm like totally running the show. I'm running the show. I'm, I'm over to you. But it's really important that people know that Karen is from Blackpool, so we've got Blackpool in the house. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. I'm going to have to go to my favourite guys in the room, right, that I'm staring at, which is homegrown, 
Liam, hello, darling. Hi, everyone. How are you doing? We're uh, we're homegrown. Um, they can't hear you, unfortunately, because we we've only got the one set of headphones here. So uh, I'm gonna have to be. Um, so I can say terrible things about them all, and they won't. And, uh, <laughs> well, People... I won't have you right. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're homegrown. I suppose I hope harmonious would be the uh, would be <laughs> the word that describes us. Uh, but we'll see in a moment. Huh? I think they'd probably say for a letter for the first name, they'd probably say loud actually, or yeah. too loud, which is kind yeah. of uh, uh, the, the normal one that I get. So yeah, harmonious, yeah. loud, yeah. Yeah. Well, that, will that I, do you? I, yeah, I absolutely love you. But just shift your head to the side. Let's see the band. Say hello, hello, wave everyone. Hello. 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 So Hi guys. Hi. Steve, Nick, Owen and John over here. This is oh, it's brilliant to have you all in the house tonight. Amazing. We're really, we're really <laughs> glad to be here. We're looking forward to it. Well, we're going to hope to hear some harmonies of homegrown. The harmonious. <laughs> harmonious homegrown. Fingers crossed. Yep. Let's hope we get it, eh? Yeah, great. wonderful. Thanks, guys. Great to have you. So, Thanks, Pete. Ben Riley, give us a word that describes you, Ben. Um, yeah, my name, Benjamin. Because <laughs> because the meaning for Benjamin, it means at the right hand side of God, right? That that's the meaning. So so Benjamin describes me really well, actually. <laughs> Okay, so that's a good answer. You're, you're God's right hand man. Well, I hope so. I mean, if anybody can be him, I'm guessing he could pick me, you know, uh, kind of like Jesus, came from the scrums, uh, you know, took myself, uh, <laughs> I've died and come back to life quite a few times. Um, so I'm a bit of a walking, <laughs> I'm a bit of a walking miracle, so. <laughs> Beautiful Ben. Well, we'll get, I won't quite. I won't quite say I'm Jesus, or I won't go that far, right? Your, your ego. I've committed a few you sins. We we'll pick one for you, beautiful Ben. Beautiful Ben beautiful in the house. Benjamin. Oh, bang on! Thank ben. you, man. We could come up bang, with bang, bang on, on ben. ben. Let's have that. Bang on Ben. Okay. Okay. Pick the next one, Ben. No, it's um, up. Let's have. Like, oh, oh my god, Jack! Hi, Jack! Hi! Jack from the Purple. I love this guy. I love this guy. Well, tell us his name. Oh, Jack, Jack, tell us your name and give us a in. word. That Hello, Emma. How are you? I you, love? How are you doing, son? I'm all right. Just at the Purple Rooms. Yes, yes, this guy is the formidable Jack, who is absolutely looking after all our guys down there in the Purple Rooms. Jack, give us a give, give us a letter. You you know, beginning with the first letter of your name. Give us a word that describes you. That's quite hard. Uh, jet lagged. <laughs> yeah, actually, jet -lagged. no, he is jet lagged. Jet lagged, Jack. Jack. Because okay. you, you just got back from uh, Ibiza, didn't you? On when was it? Yes. What day is it now? Right, Saturday. Uh, Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday, Wednesday it was. You were the winner last week. I just had a little break because I've been here since March. You have. You've been eating there, sleeping there, looking after the guys. You've done amazing work, Jack. Honestly. So stick around, yeah. Jack. Cause but like I said, it. That. Right, that's fine. I'll stick around. I'll be around, pottering around. Yeah, stick around. We'll give you a shout. Yeah. And can I say to to the right. uh, to the people watching? that you're a part of this Lancashire User Forum Live Lounge as well, and we'll be reading your comments. As, so some of the comments of, of people that are coming through are, we've got, um, in the house. let's see, we've got Jubilant Jewels, Julie Cahill, and I want to see some more of you guys describing yourself with that first letter of your name. Okay. And, and we'll shout you out. Yeah, I just want to say massive shout out to Wendy Moss in the house. Yes, Preston Service Manager for Inspire. Beautiful woman. Julie, hi. Paul B's watching. Yes, Paul. Michelle Handley. David Simpson. Nice one, David Simpson. It's your third week back. Um, Paula Bolland. 
Radden, Kathy oh. Radden, Wendy Daggers is watching. Night Lynn Sutter, nice one, Lynn Maria Hampton in the house. Julie saying hi to you, Mick. Anthony Jones, yes, Jonesy. Carol Lund, hi, Mum. Glen Island, I hope you're having a good time, Glen. Andy Owen, the little soldier on the street there for the reach. Look at that. Leanne Look. Moore. I've waited all week for this. Oh, bless her. Beth oh. in the house, nice one. Hi, Beth. Okay, get your comments in the comments box, guys. 48 if he's watching. Like it, share it. You could win some money. And don't forget, we want to see you describe yourself using the first letter of the name. Using guys, the word that yourself. where's this link? <clears throat> on Red Rose Recovery's Facebook page. Right, right. so it's not on the Luff one. It's on the Red Rose. I'm going to go on it. One. Yeah. Red Rose yeah. Facebook page. Like it and share it. Like it and share it. Okay. Brad, give us a give us a first letter of your name. Give us a word that describes yourself. I'm gonna choose the first one that comes into my head and it was boisterous. Boisterous, Brad. Okay, we'll have that boisterous, Brad. And um Daniel Little Child. Daniel, using the first letter of your name. Give us a word that describes yourself. No, I'm going to go with Pete because <clears throat> the theme this week is commitment, isn't it? Yes. yes so it is. I'm going to go with devoted. Top one. Devoted okay. Daniel. What's that? Daniel had a bit of inside knowledge on the rest of the guests, didn't he? Because yeah. we forgot. Well, we didn't forget. We just didn't get quite round to disclosing that this week's value for the Live Look Lounge is commitment. Yeah, we've got some committed guys in the room, haven't we? Do you know, very we, committed people. We've got some committed guys who, who are also behind the scenes as yeah. well, and we love them and, and want to recognise them. But yeah, we have got some committed guys in the room. Um, speaking of, of whom, Lorna, can we have a word that describes you? Where's Take yourself off mute, Lorna. Loyal Lorna. Loyal Lorna. <laughs> oh, perfect. What was that? Loyal Lorna. Loyal. Loyal. Yes. Loyal Lorna. Loyal Lorna. That She's is, loyal to that the is bone, absolutely she? perfect for you. Loyal Lorna. Yeah. Absolutely perfect for you. Has someone ran that line on you before, Lorna? Emma. <laughs> Okay, so loyalty. Not... It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. I just want to say, of course, David Simpson. We do want to know what crazy stuff's been going on for you. Do you know, mm -hmm. it's it's really interesting that you you say Emma spoke that over you, and that's what that's what being a part of the Lancashire User Forum. Um, that's one of the good things. We we want to speak the true, the beautiful, the good. We want to speak that into each other's world. Absolutely. We don't want to disempower or tell people what they can't do. We want to identify the good, the true and the beautiful and speak it over each other. And it is what you can do as well. And I say this to Anthony Jones quite often, who's watching, who says that, Lorna, you're the hero in uh, St. Anne's over there. Gorgeous. Get on that service user rep training, aren't they? So I'm reading the comments section, and the only one I can see who's who's come up with a uh, a word to describe themselves is Julie. Nice one, Julie. Who else is Who else is going to jump in there with a word that describes themselves? Or the word first that letter of the name. Yeah, or a word that describes us and keep it clean, guys. <laughs> You're opening us up there. It's all right, we're transparent. Okie dokie. So commitment, working passionately to improve the lives of those in recovery. And we've got a really diverse recovery community yeah. spanning from uh, people who use drugs, who are on the journey, who are, who are heading in the direction to people who are through the other end, who are abstinent and employed in housing. We've got a whole spectrum within the recovery community. And I think we're committed as well, just on that. I think we're committed. I know I certainly am and the team certainly is, on exposing people from our drug unit using community to um, platforms where people are in recovery. Introducing them, yeah. holding their hand. Mm -hmm. I was talking to one of our guests earlier on and I was saying he's a bit like uh, a tour operator 
because he holds people's hands and he takes them mm -hmm. on the journey. He doesn't just say, oh, here's what you're doing, there's where you go. He kind of he goes there together. And one of the one of the breakdowns of, of our values is focusing on those who need help and support the most. Yeah. You know, and, and we've got some guys who are behind the scenes who are really committed yeah. to focusing on mm -hmm. those people who need help the most. Mm -hmm. um, sharing knowledge and opportunities in order to improve the lives of others. Yeah, and and daily, I think, daily. you know, one of my frustrations with the system is that I felt like I had to be at a certain place before I was yes, given right. opportunities. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So we set up Red Rose Recovery and we said, you know what, we're going to give people opportunities where they're at. We're not going to yeah. say you have to get to a, a certain point um to, to have opportunities we're going to meet you where you're at and and, and uh, map your skills and your abilities and we do meet people where they're at don't we that's like a fundamental part of what we do so this is for before we got before before covid hit we had real live lancashire user forums where you could get up to 150 200 people in one place once every three months well, you could never get the mic off you no, I became rather attached to that, um, but I do believe that we give that away, you know, only, only when needed. I used to be like that, I'm not today. So yeah. now we've got a platform of 5K plus for anyone suffering from, interested in or affected by substance misuse in recovery, family members and anyone who, do you know what, just gives a goddamn cares about uh, this topic. I just want to say, I think we need to be giving out prizes around people coming in with the uh, encouraging names for themselves mm. you know with the first letter of the name and i just want to say lee bailey armor um nice to have you in the room mate and you've got one day in get yes. it lad get in listen it's tough come day. on lad tough getting that well day. done one day in nice one lee we should have some like, sound effects for that shouldn't we yeah the bell we should borrow ben's bell ben's ding, ding, yeah. Yeah. No, you can have, you can have my bell if you want we're getting um we're getting a sound pad in with a load of cool sound effects so we'll have to i'll let you yeah. i'll let you know how it goes right yeah right. yeah 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 absolutely okay so on that let's let's just let homegrown do what they do best and play us some music guys and they did enter the talent competition they did didn't they and, and, and it, we did judge them and they were amazing well can i just ask them where we're up to in terms of the um the winners for that has it been bev watson if you're watching or lorna can fill us in on that coming up in a short while but homegrown did enter the talent competition they are very talented individuals indeed so let's hand over the floor to them because they just rock i love them go hey, for it, guys. right we're ready to go yeah just a, a big shout out to everyone out there in recovery um lots of things Woo! lots of things have been part of my recovery but music's been one of the big ones so uh you know we uh we play music, but we also look after each other. That's a big thing for homegrown. Yeah. So uh, let's uh, let's do it. We're going to do one of Steve's songs, which is called Early Morning Rain. And, well, it's, a uh, it's a collective song. It's all of our songs. Okay. Yeah. Right. Take it away, Steve. Okay.
Well, we're all kind of Rossendale. Um, we, yeah, we're all sort of the, from the Rossendale area. Nick's from a bit further afield. He's from over right. near Alden, that way. But uh, yeah, the rest of us, it's uh, it's Rossendale. Yeah, Rockstall, so, Rockstall's the best. Rockstall, actually, for, yeah. for three of us. Owen's over Hazzy Way, Haslington Way. So, uh, so yeah, we're all from around here. Uh, which, uh, uh, so East Lanks, and uh, yeah. yeah, that's us. <laughs> I can see, I can see that you're all really squashed into a front room there. Whose front room is that? This is well. This is uh, this is Steve's place, but it's uh, it's our little. Bubble. It's the homegrown studio, yeah. <laughs> it's the home, homegrown studio, as we're calling it. Uh, but uh, it actually sort of squashes us up with the uh, the foreshortening of the the camera angle. But yeah, we are trying to make a do, like everybody, you know, find ways to do things, find ways to play been difficult for musicians has uh, has locked down you know it's uh, there was a long period there where we were all uh, uh, you know uh, locked down and we couldn't play together as things have changed slightly we've started being able to play a bit of music uh, but it's it's changed things and I think uh, music and the arts in general it's a it's a difficult time and us like everyone else involved in them we're trying to find ways to to play we're talking to to venues and so on and other, other other performers and trying to find ways of doing it. So this, we're so thankful for uh, for an opportunity oh, yeah. to play for your live lounge, because you know we're we're, we're musicians. At the end of the day, we want to play. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, so we need thank, to, don't we? We need, to, we <laughs> need it. It's, it's uh, it, it is. It's a need with us. Mm. So thank you very much for giving us the opportunity and let us uh, uh, start your uh, start the uh, the live lounge off. And also, well done. You know, you're reaching lots and lots of people in recovery, which is uh, more important than ever, I think, at this time. Yeah. So, you know, keep it up, guys, and really, really glad to uh, to contribute. Thanks very much for having us. Can I just sound you out then um, on a potential opportunity? So on Tuesday, I'll be going over to your neck of the woods, Rotten Star, to a, a a mental health housing unit that uh, mm -hmm. offers support for people um, in recovery coming from criminal justice and, and uh, oh, yeah, yeah. medium secure mental health services. And the, the clientele in, in this particular establishment, some, some of the feedback is that they've, they've not really been introduced to any cold social peers. And I, I just think, you know, if, if I could create uh, an opportunity for you guys to live stream yes. into those types of venues, yeah. is that something that oh, you yeah. are interested in? Absolutely, Pete. Absolutely. You know, if we, if you know, if, if yeah, definitely. You know, that's a, that's an issue we all care about, and you know, personal experience as well around that yeah. as well. So it's. Uh, it's definitely something I'd be really, really happy to support with. If they're up for having uh, having live streams and it's going to, you know, you know, bright people's day a bit, we're, we're well up for it. Because, like I say, we just we just want to play. So yeah, give me a shout about that, Pete, and we'll uh, we'll maybe we'll, we'll work something out. That's uh, that's uh, that's brilliant. Thanks very much, man. Great. All right. Right. Are you still with Inspire, Liam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For my sins. Uh, so uh, so yeah, we're we're still there. We're, I mean, we um, as I'm sure you get the message out. Services are still open. Yes. Um, we've had to adjust how we do everything because yeah. of the, the situation, but we're, we're finding a way and we're getting better at it. I think we're yeah. finding more ways of supporting people and uh, yeah, just, you know, keep that message out there. So, uh, Inspire services over in East Lakes, we're open, we're, yeah. we, we're doing outreach, we're doing, we're covering needle X, we've, we've got treatment, we're running, uh, we're getting people through for detoxes. It's, uh, it's it's all still it's all still happening there, but we're just working a bit differently. And uh, if we see you one to one, we have to wear all the funky clover and the face shield, which is kind of it's they, I don't know it's yeah it's different, isn't it? It's <laughs> it's, new normal, isn't uh, it? So, but we it is it is absolutely. But we're, we're we're still there. We're working. So I'd encourage anyone that needs support to get in touch with us. Absolutely, right. you heard it here first. If you need support Brilliant. with drug and alcohol issues you inspire are still open also just just on that liam karen's just come in karen works over in blackpool and then um, maybe there's something around getting something burned off for the prisons as well so definitely you guys are going to be right out there now so these guys are amazing they are called homegrown have a think have you got another song you're going to do for us liam uh, when, when, when do you want it 
I might just just sort out what it is you want to play, and then we'll bring you in in a bit. Maybe maybe we could uh, close the show on it. Yeah. About between okay. six and seven. Is that all right? You can either okay. stick around yeah, or can... drop back in when. I'll I'll try. Can I can I log back in at, at yeah, yeah. Uh, in a little bit because it's yeah. we've, I've just got I'll set things up a bit better here. But yeah. uh, if yeah. if that's all right, if I can kind of log back into the thing, then uh, awesome, yeah, we'll do another guys. one to close You've the show. Link. You've all got right. the link. Log back in any time so, you want. Yeah. So we can we can log back in and we can listen as we go along. I'll explain that to the guys and uh, and yeah. uh, we'll 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 get in back in it, certainly in time to to close the show off if that's what you want. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Home guys. Homegrown. Homegrown. Hang, hang on. <laughs> homegrown. Before before you go. Um, that's the word homegrown. If you do want to do some recording, you know, and get some get some music into prisons and stuff. Let's have a chat about that, uh, you know, through Pete. And also, um, when the clubs are opening, well, we, we, we've got a booking for the um, for the 3rd or the 11th of October um, with Dry Wave. Dry Wave is a drinking drug-free event. Um, I think it'd be great to get you guys in um, to, in, to, to introduce the... Um, to introduce the show, we're all about getting guys with uh, with lived experience, as Pete says, um, getting guys in to uh, to perform for us at Dry Wave. Um, you know, that's a drink, drink and drug free recovery um, uh, 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 rave, I guess. <laughs> you know, if, if you want to put it that way. So, that. Yeah. yeah. So you thanks, can guys. About that, ben, when you come on, just wanting to say, just before you go, guys. David Simpson is saying you're pure gold. Beth thinks you should get that on iTunes. You got a lot of love coming in. Claire really, hi, honey. Somebody else who can get you in the prisons there. Fab Brown is watching. Anthony Jones. Um, oh, I'm so glad Anthony's in the house. And Tony Lee, our very own Tony Lee. Yes, Tony. And I was listening to you then and I was inspired. I've, I've shared it. So anybody who's, who's invited me to join their group, yeah. I've now just shared it. So there's about 30 or 40 groups I've just shared it to. And, and what I was thinking was, you guys are brilliant. And yeah. it'd, be, it'd be a worthwhile uh, investment if you invested in some decent webcams and microphones so that our people could hear and see you better and clearer. Yes, because there are comments coming in that they can't hear you on the phones, so maybe there's some funding we can get for you some equipment. And this is what we found, isn't it, that we needed decent equipment. We've just got, new normal. we've just applied to the Building Recovery Innovation Chest that Red Rose Recovery Manage, and we'll be buying some 4, 5G, is it 4G or 5G? I don't do 5G, do they? Well, can't. if you do 5G, we'll be getting them. Um, and so good quality stuff um, streaming to people's world and you know Karen might talk a little bit later on HMP Garth and HMP Wymot have said we want the live Luff Lounge in the streaming prison streaming on so, the telly so you heard it here first when everyone else do it after us they're doing it because we motivated them to and we shared it but we won't tell you just how we do it until we've done it. We'll tell you after. Look at the time, Mr. Yarwood. We need to seriously move on. People have got to go. That's a nice way of saying wind your neck in. I know. So, go sort yourself out, guys. They have. They've gone. Brilliant. They were awesome, aren't they? They were good. Yeah. We, need, we need to learn. And they're coming back. And they're coming back. Let's, <sighs> let's just fly over to, quickly, Ben, because I know you've got to go. Ben, what's up to you, Ben? Give us an update. Wow, yeah, thank, thanks for uh, thanks for inviting me in, guys, and um, you know, big shout out to the uh, to the to the homegrown gang there. That that was fantastic. You know, I really thought their lyrics were kind of really point, poignant about staying in the moment. Then the moment's gone, right? You know, I think that was really kind of clear. That um, I think kind of as you know as addicts you know especially earlier on we can get kind of lost in that mindset where where we almost become like the uh we become the the the, the uh, doctor who don't we the time traveler you know moving back and forward in your mind 
kind of forgetting about the moment, right? So I really like that, guys. And uh, and I meant what I said, you know, it, 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 it'd be great to get you on to Dry Wave. Um, I'm really excited to to speak about the involvement that we're having with with uh, Pete and Emma and Love Rooms at the moment. We've been um, we've been kind of clashing clashing heads and I, 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 and uh, you know having these what do you call them mind, mind storms or whatever they call brainstorms, right? Brainstorm. We've been brainstorming some we've been brainstorming some projects together. So. Uh, yeah, super excited. Not next week, but the week after. We've got Pete and Emma coming through to the Dry Wave Radio. That's Dry Digital, which is on Pi Radio every every Thursday from 9 to 11. There's so much information. I feel like a bleeding walking advert sometimes. And that's not actually what I am. You know, it's, um, you know, me, Pete and Emma really sing off the same hit him she we love working with people we love um having a look at what assets people have at, pe at people as individuals when they come into recovery and even further on into recovery and how we can how we can kind of make things happen for people's individual <laughs> like like you know personalities and assets and and um how can we further their development right and it was like pete then like uh, I can see Pete's brain ticking like mine, you know, as soon as kind of Pete heard them, he's like, right, you know, let's get you into, you know, uh, uh, the prison, into the prisons doing, doing some CDs and let's get you some funding to, to get, um, to get new, uh, new equipment and stuff. And this is kind of what we, what we do. This is what we've been speaking about. How ben, can we, ben, I know, I know in the prison system, There'll be lots of lads in there who have got a particular set of skills and they're wrapped Absolutely. around music and MCing. Now, I know you have got some technical skills and connections around music studios, around, you know, the Emma and I have been coming over on a weekly basis to yeah. Greater Manchester to help you develop a, a platform in which there's been an equal exchange of skills. So it's not like we're coming over there saying, we've got all the answers, we're going to teach you. We're learning a lot from you in, in how to you know, use these technical platforms. But I think there'll be guys sat in prison who, who ears prick when, when they hear about some of the initiatives that you're doing. And, and I just want to say on August the 8th, the last lockdowns will be specific to prison. So it will be a prison-specific live loft lounge and the guests yeah. and speakers will all have expertise and knowledge around the criminal justice system because what we want to do is live stream into the prisons that will allow that, but we're going we're gonna to have a, a library of DVDs because we've got 20 weekly shows. And I just want to say there as well, uh, especially to Anthony Jones, I'm so glad you're in the house. If you're wanting to come on as a person in lived experience on the, the theme of the prisons, then just drop a comment in the comments box, love, and me and Lorna will pick that up. Because that's important, you know, yeah. you guys as viewers, you, you're part of this. Yeah. So if you want to see um what do you want agenda items get in get stuck into us you know if you want to be a part of it say so but i think you know with you ben i think what you've got is a heart to bring together the greater manchester yeah. recovery community yeah, I do. And, and me and emma have said well we want to help support that because <coughs> there's there's a there's a view that the, the voice of the people who are accessing those service isn't as integrated as mm. it could be or should be. So we want to make sure that everywhere, you know, the people who design them systems turn. And everywhere has a little bit. It doesn't have to just yeah. be in Lancashire, does it? Like the Lancashire Youth the Forum doesn't have to just be in Lancashire. It's about No, not at all. It can be everywhere. It can be all over the UK. And that's what you know that's what um, dry wave is about. 
you know, it's about making it, it's dry wave is about tearing down the stigmas and the barriers of recovery, you know. Um it's it's about, you know, addressing the fact that there are multiple pathways to recovery. And it's about addressing the addressing the fact that we're here in the UK. And the way that we're gonna do that is is through music because Music is language, language of the world, and it breaks down barriers. Yeah. So what we've actually done is secured a venue for next year. We're going to be working with the Love, Love Lounge. This is for all. Listen, all you guys watching this now, get excited and press that share button as well. Get involved with this message now, right? Press that share button. Create yourself a watch party so everybody can hear this message now because that's what we're about as a community. It's about spreading the message, right? So what we've done is secured a 5,000 capacity venue. It's the best venue in Manchester. And we have got huge, huge headline acts coming down to support all you guys and girls in recovery. We're going to bring the whole board. It's going to, it's, it's going to be the UK's largest recovery celebration, you know, it, it, it's the UK Recovery Festival. It's under the name of Dry Wave. Luff Rooms are going to be taking a big chunk of that, you know, and, and having a, 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 um, a camping uh, holiday by the side. Look, we've got loads of plans for it, but it's happening. It's en route and it's en route to you. And not only that, you know, we we are, and I'm going to say this, I'm going to be bold about it. That should have been my word. It should have been Ben Bold. So I'm going to be bold okay. in this statement. We, we are going to change the face of recovery and really bring the arts and different mediums into recovery and not have the same old boring shite that I've been hearing for 10 years. We're going to really <laughs> change the face of it. Yeah, do you, you know what I'm saying, guys and girls? Let's change the face of recovery. Um, and let's bring the fun back into recovery. Because oh. listen, I'm excited. You know, I'm excited about my recovery. My recovery, I brought the adventure back into my life. That's what we need is event, adventure, purpose, and something that pulls us all together where we're not fighting each other. You know, yeah. and I think one thing that can do that is music. So together with a Love Lounge and any other organization that wants to message me or PRM and now, do it now, jump on board this wave because it's happening, you know, and all you guys are involved in it. Make sure you hit that share button. It's a really important message, this. It always is when it comes to Love Lounge. So get that share button. Thanks for the platform to to to, to do this, guys. I can't wait to see you, uh, not next week, Bold but the week Benny. after. Yeah. Bold Ben in the bucket hat. Oh, that's Come good, on. Man. Get the bees going. Bucket Come hat, on, Ben. <laughs> when I say dry, you, you say, say You wave. say wave. Dry, dry, wave, dry, dry. wave. <laughs> Come on, because let's have it right. Uh, on a serious note, Ben, on a serious note, it's the passionate ones who make the difference. Come you know, on. And I yeah. know there's passionate people out there, so we're just giving a, a shout out to those passionate people. Yeah. We know you're there. Yeah, we know we you're know there. You're there, guys and girls. And if you are, Sandal we're waiting for you. What you're knocking on our door and getting involved in this? We know the passionate Hello. ones are there. Yeah, we know you're there. So, oh shit! And I just want to say before I finish, because I know I'm taking up time, but I just want to say, um, I had a lot of passionate guys and girls come to help me uh, about about what two weeks ago. I'm a musician at heart, right? I'm a rapper, and I, I wrote a story about my first sixty days in recovery. Uh, I managed to get a load of cool professional video guys down and stuff like that. And 20 guys and girls from recovery came to help me do a music video, right? So I'm really excited to tell people about the music video that's going to come out. Pete and Emma's seen it. They've had a, yes. a little cheeky private showing. Yes, we did. It's awesome. I love it. Yeah, we've I got love it. privileged access. Yes. You, got the, you got the privileged access. You always get the access. Right, Ben, great to hear from you, as ever. We've got the purple rooms who are there. And, and they and need to go, I think. They need to go. Okay, some see you later, guys. Take so, care. See you later, ben. Ben.
and let's go straight over to the purple rooms. Um, come in, guys. So got, uh, yeah, you're right. We've got Jack and Dean. So, no, that's Michael. That's Michael. Beans oh, Michael. That's Michael. Dean's got off. Michael Dean's gone, has it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just gone upstairs for a second, but uh, we got Jack here. Jack's, Jack runs this hotel. He, it's, his, it's his hotel. Absolutely. He's, he's doing brilliant. I just want to come to you a minute, because you sold your painting last week, didn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So how did you feel knowing that you are a gifted, talented artist whose who work is worth money? Uh, I, I was I was shocked. I was shocked that he bought it. Um and yeah, yeah, it, you know what my next step is tattooing. Tattoons, what one of my next steps? Once I start learning how to use a tattoo gun. Um, oh, watch out, everybody. Watch out. It's gonna be seen. Can I test on you? I'll gladly give you my sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I can't wait to do, you know, people's sleeves and that for them. Jack's gonna be a customer. <laughs> but yeah, Jack, yeah, he's doing doing amazing. He's, he's keeping this running, this hotel. He's keeping it running in check, aren't you? Really? Yeah, you got to do, aren't you, mate? And he, and he, he does does brilliant. He's like a he's like a machine. Yeah, I just want to come to Jack a minute. Hi, darling. Hello, my love. Are you all right, honey? I'm all right. Yeah. Okay, I just want to say because because Jack used to manage a hotel, um, and well, I was just a receptionist originally. Just but, but but the transition for you yeah. is now running like a it's like a I suppose a hostel really. Yeah. Mm. To get the guy the homeless guys on the street came into the hotel and I know from conversations with you you've got emotionally attached, you want to do the best you can. What's that been like for you, Jack? Well, it's just been like a roller coaster, hasn't it? Just like because it's new for me as it is to everyone else moving into purple rooms because like I moved in myself. Uh, I've been here since like the end of March, and then at first I didn't know what to expect. Um, we've like we've had a lot of help from like you guys, the Foxes Centre have been coming in. Um, but yeah, it's been good. Met new people, and uh, there's been days where I've just been like been fed up because like people being difficult, or some days it's harder than others. But like quite now we've got um, we've got a lot of like good people in. Um, there's like a good bunch I'd say. Uh, so. It's all right at the minute. Just we just want to make sure everyone gets like somewhere to live and like yeah, just some favour accommodation really and hope these guys get what they need. I think it's an absolute I think it's an absolute beautiful opportunity to go in and make a difference and expose the guys in there to mutual aid and platforms like, like this. Um, yeah. which is why we got you guys a laptop. And it was Mick Fleming that donated the laptop. Can you take me off for Thank you very much. So Mick, meet the guys in the purple rooms. It's a beautiful this thing. Is... Beautiful yeah. thing, boys. Now, Let's this, have it. this guy is doing some great things over in the East and I will take you over one day when yeah. you know, we are. So just, um, just one thing I want to add. Since like we've done this purple rooms uh, with the, the homeless and stuff, obviously you know yourself and we've got a bad name from this. Yeah. And purple rooms, and then one day we don't know when it, this is going to go back to normal. And there's just something I want to do. I don't know what to like show that we've done a good thing, and we just don't get yeah. the bad name out of it because obviously you know what we've got people saying and thinking at the minute, and it's like it's not all bad, is it? No, it. Do you know what? Seriously, this is this is against stigma. This is a big. Do you know how? Do you know how we do that, Jack? Yeah. Right, I'm going to just put you on on full screen. That. When you talk, you go on full screen. So yeah. I, I want to give you some exposure. But what I also want to do is share some of the beautiful stories that people have, yeah. you know, people who, who've experienced tremendous amounts of adversity, who've yeah. got heaps of trauma, who for years and years have been, you know, super users of yeah. public services, yeah. have all of a sudden come through the public yeah. rooms and they've been... You know, transformed. They've yeah. started a journey that set them yeah. off a trajectory that sent them off to, to a, a, a beautiful place. Now, I think what we should be doing, Jack, is 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 celebrating those yeah. stories by way of case studies, yeah. by way of putting it out there on social media. You know, because that's yeah. how you change the hearts yeah, and minds. Yeah, yeah. Of yeah. yeah. 
you know, you're Definitely. introducing to, to real stories. So on that note, yeah. have we got one of you guys there who wants to share their story? I'll, I'll say some. I'll let Dean. Uh, I'm just going to be popping around, but I'll be here. Thanks, Emma. Right, thanks, thanks, Pete. All right, love. Dean, do you want to take a seat and just... Go for it. Well, my name's Dean. I'm 29. I'm staying in Purple Rooms. I've been here for nearly 15 weeks now. And um, yeah, I've been I've been a cocaine addict since I was 15, something like 15, 16. Um, and since I've I've worked all my life basically since I was 16, worked and um, yeah, I, I had a little girl three years ago, but she went through a lot of problems from birth. So since that, I I think I I hit the drugs harder, but at the same time, uh, she she they actually moved back to Dover, and that made things a hundred times worse. And I have found it really hard. But then I started going to Inspire and Red Rose Recovery, and ever since that first meeting that I went to, the prospects on life that I had just changed. Do you know what I mean? It just changed altogether. And then that's when I decided that. I wanted to change, not just for me, but for my daughter, you know. And um, don't let me know, I'm still finding it hard, but it's, yeah, it, it, I am finding it very hard. Obviously, I've been, been, it's been a long time, do you know what I mean? But, um, I'm sorry, I'm just getting a bit upset now, just thinking about it all. Um, You're doing amazing. You're doing great, Dean. You're doing great, Dean. We love you. Yeah, I'm just finding it hard at the moment. Yeah. But um, I am looking to get back into the recovery groups uh, and just get any help I can, really. Yeah. And you can, Dean, you can. We've got a laptop in there now, so you can access the groups online. And then there's the outreach guys that can come and connect with you. Can I just um, give a massive help? Where's Yvonne? Is Yvonne there? Where's my wife? Yeah. yeah, baby, hi! Yeah, hi. Yvonne, get on there, look. Yeah. Where is she? Oh, hey, hey honey, how you doing? All right. Yeah. Now I just fold up again oh. more. Can I, I come just back, back up again, may I? I knew who you were way before I ever met you. Because Emma comes home <laughs> and she tells me about this amazing woman amazing. who's full of strength, yeah, man. who yeah. is far more intelligent than she lets on. Than anyone gives her credit for. Uh, and then I finally met you the other day and she, Emma made me drive all the way around the one-way system in town just to stop so she could introduce me to oh. you. The diamond, Yvonne. Oh, thank you. <laughs> strong woman and we're going to get you in the groups as well so yeah yeah but you've had it tough as well haven't you Yvonne yeah well so I'm not telling you my life story because it's a lot I've yeah. just gone through trauma times with this with my face being smashed in with an hammer I've got another operation on Wednesday I know and I, I'm yeah. going, to, we're going to make sure we've got you some support for that Yvonne yeah I think if you told us your life story, we'd, we'd all probably think... All right. You wouldn't even still be, you'd still be sat there in five days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, I love you, honey, and I'll be there shortly. I'll be there shortly. But you're amazing. Right. And Emma is on a mission with a bag of goodies yeah. uh, to... Coming to, to you. To, like, serve up into your world. And Mick... Who's up in the in the corner of the screen has donated hundred and twenty pounds. Yeah. So we'll be going, we'll be getting some some things in into your world soon. But like Emma says, you have to put the work in as well, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Who's Mick? Oh, Mick. All right, Mick. Oh, I go. Mm. All right, thank you. So, oh, I'm having a moment. I'm having a moment. Stick around, yeah. guys, because we're gonna um, just before we go. So, um, D, sure, yeah. Everybody who comes on and tells their story, we give them a 
a medal. So you've got a speaker boot camp. Well, it's a, a fearless speaker medal on the way to you. Um, for them. For, for your <laughs> you, Dean, do you know a Curtis Wallace? Yep, I do very well. I was, he was actually born in the bed next to me. Oh, so Curtis Wallace is saying yes, Dean. Nice to see yes. you. Yes, wicked. And Julie Cahill is asking where the meetings are held. So the meetings are online, Julie. If we can get one of the viewers, uh, Beth, I think Beth's watching, if you can get some dates out on there. That's the dawn, Beth, yes, that'd be brilliant. Claire wicked. Hill is saying go on, Dean, as well. And wicked. saying that we get you. Yeah, they love you and they're there to support you. So there's a lot of love for you guys. A lot of love. Brilliant. In the house. Hi, Jackie. While we're on with uh, our medals, can I just go over to Brad? Because Brad, uh, yeah. you came on last week and you shared your story and you got away without us being able to say. Uh, not only did you share your story, but you come on the training with us and you you have you have gone through the how many modules on Speaker Bootcamp? Well, there are three, but I think Brad will have done. Uh, six. Oh, sorry, no, there's three days and look, there's 12 modules. I think Brad's done six. So, for that, you will get your Fearless Speaker medal and you can wear that loud and proud. But, <laughs> Brad, it's only your bronze. If you want to attain your silver, your gold, and your platinum, you've got to do a little bit more work, a little bit more legwork. So, how do you feel about that, Brad? You're on mute, mate. <clears throat> Unmute yourself. Way off it now, yeah. Sorry about that. Speaking to the screen. Um, you know, it's good, yeah. It's absolutely brilliant. You know, it's all about progress, isn't it? So, uh, you know, w w when it's possible, I'll get myself onto that silver and gold. Yes, lad. And it'll benefit me. It wasn't that long ago, though, that you was in a completely different place, so wasn't it, Brad? No, it was six months ago, six months and a bit now. Um, you know, I was in, I was in a bad place. You know, uh, you know, suicidal. Um, not mentally in a nice place. You know. Well, you look amazing, Brad. Honestly, you look mm. like a transformed human being. Do you know? Someone said to me the other day that, and I think this is really fitting for you. You look like a rehydrated human being. How have you done it, Brad? Tell the guys um, watching and, and in the purple rooms how you did it. Well, for me, um, you know, I had to surrender. Um, you know, on, so for me, I had to uh, start getting humble and start getting honest, uh, giving this stuff a go. Now, I, 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 I was spiritually, emotionally uh, broken. You know, I, I was on my knees, um, you know, and, and, and there was no other way for me. Um, but but to start asking for help, um, you know, and that, that, that's where it's... Sorry. Who did you ask for help? Where, where did you get it from? So I went to a, I went to a lady called Kelly Tanze, um, who, who works for Inspire in Burnley, um, you know, and she helped me get back into a detox centre, uh, Waterfoot in, in, in Rosendale. And then that's where the legwork started. I had to start going to all groups again that I've done in the past. Yeah. You know, and, and I was full of guilt and shame and all that sort of stuff. You know, but I was ready to stop using. Uh, I really was. So I was willing to go to any lengths. And that took yeah. humility, that bro. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. With that yeah. fine humility. That's brilliant. Thanks for, for that, Ben. Uh, Brad, Brad, sorry, bad. Brad. Bad, Brad. Bad, Brad. Bad, Brad. Bad, Brad. <laughs> so, so it, what was it? Brilliant, Brad, or was it? Uh, boisterous. boisterous. Boisterous, Brad. First well, thing that, yeah, first thing that comes to me head, so I thought I'll go with that. Well, boisterous, Brad, you've got yourself a fearless speaker. Fantastic. Brilliant. Brad, bronze one. And Thank if you. you want to earn your, your next step up, have a word with Daniel, your oppo. Yeah, yeah you I shall. Up. I get shall that, do that. Get on that leadership, Brad. I just want to shout out to you. Jackie Scott in the house all the way from Thailand. 
beautiful to have you here, Jackie. God, I go back years with this girl. Um, she's saying that these incentives keep people going, which they do. Yvonne's saying, nice one for the laptop. Yvonne, we love you. Um, Anthony Jones. Yes, Anthony's in the house. Wow, well, there's um, a lot of love for you. Jackie's bro. saying that she knows Kelly. She's ace. So, you know, Inspire is open, guys. Um, you know, it's, it's the Kellys of this world that we need to thank as well, you know, and, and say the work, what you do is, yeah. is like, it deserves a medal. Um, thank you, Kelly. And just on that, as well as Kelly, I know we've got a few of the uh, treatment providers staff in the room. So, speaking of Inspire, we've got Andy in the house. Andy's right. Are you are right, darling? You're on mute. Uh, oh, we've got you. We can hear You've you. got it. Hiya. Hello there. Hiya. Happy Saturday, everyone. Hiya. I'm a little bit humbled to be invited on, so thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. Oh, well, I, I kind of wanted to just have you on because I know I've been doing a bit of outreach in Preston. Um, and, well, yeah, a lot. And um, yeah. Andy's, you know, Andy is a constant face. When My car is now... Van. described as a clinical van and that car was my pride and joy yeah and it still is but it's now a lot of people's pride and joy isn't it yeah yeah and then um, i andy i wanted you to come on because andy you you was known for recovery works within the new you yeah but you're doing other stuff now and every week i come in and you're there with your little headphones on on the phone to somebody talking to somebody mentoring my somebody. madonna headset yeah that's yeah. it I yeah. see it looks like a pilot, like he's like gonna take the Inspire building off in the air, you know, with his headphones on. But I just wanted to ask you to come on to tell us about that transition and, and what that's been like for you. Well, basically, I mean, we're, we're still part of the new U team, which which I, I could talk about all day because of their ace. Um, but I was Recovery Works, now I've become a, a, a CGL family member. So, um, so that transition was happening, but uh, yeah, we, we supply, we, we basically, we, we provide employment training education for people. And um, that hasn't stopped. Although when COVID happened, it was, it was quite a scary time for everyone. I think, um, yeah, nobody could ever think about it in their worst nightmares, what this was about. So whether we were going to encourage people, you know, to go and take employment, you know, go and earn, eight pound 50 an hour or whatever but not knowing whether they're going to go and catch something that could potentially kill them so that that was that was quite awful but our transition in sense is that at the time my boss my then boss he said you know you're not essential don't get involved just stay in touch with people so we did supply and we did put, provide networks to contact with people so people were feeling lonely we were phoning them we were just keeping in touch touching base with them Maybe they were the only phone calls people were getting over the week or whatever. Um, so, yeah, so we've done a lot of that. We've got WhatsApp groups and stuff, so people are still connecting. But then I, I said to uh, uh, Wendy Moss, who I think she might be watching in case I swear, um, <laughs> I said to her, let, let me come back and get involved. And, and I wanted to say on, on that note how impressed I've been with, yeah. uh, with CGL Inspires, key workers, and the people involved with that organisation, because they was under horrendous stress. Uh, I, I wanted to—I wanted to—I don't know if people knew that, but I, I wanted to just let people know that, and I—and I—I wanted to just go and sort of help out where I could. So, so I'm not going to take any credit for me being a member of the team, but I just wanted to—I just wanted to acknowledge that, you know, a tip hat moment for them. They were—they've been amazing. And I think maybe they're, they're maybe the forgotten heroes, like you were saying there, before. That yeah. maybe people sort of maybe take them for granted, maybe. But I, I watched uh, those people pull out miracles, uh, people on prescriptions and so on and so forth. So my team and I, we're still supplying on doing the uh, the employment and training and education, but we're obviously we're working a bit different. But I'm sort of getting a little bit more involved in the other type of work which I hadn't done before which was the key work sort of stuff. So that would be even down to outreaches like yourself and then uh, prescription drop-offs and t taking the van out, you know, to go and visit out and see the people that are doing the sex work of, a, of an evening. So I've kind of been involving myself in other things that I would never 
never ever dream of you know that would be my kind of bag but um yeah it's been it's been a I've never had such a thing as a, as a bad experience is experiences are experiences but I've been overwhelmed actually with um how impressed I've been with people and how much work they've been doing mm. people like yourselves red rose new you team andy owen and all those guys still regardless of, of how dangerous it was and nobody knew how dangerous it was they were still going out there still doing the food banks they were you know it was incredible so the, the whole new you teamwork thing was fantastic so i can only i'm i'm, I'm very proud and very humbled to be a, been a part of that so that's that's where that's about really if that answers your question I tend to waffle. I'm sorry about that. No, you absolutely nailed it, Andy. I knew you would. And I just want to second that as well, you know. And I know Wendy's watching now and Katie Roscoe and Kev Henderson and Lee. They race. They honestly, they're amazing. They are actually the only Absolutely. Humbled by the of their, their presence, yeah. Yeah, you know, and um, I mean, I mean for, for me, I would definitely say that from all this, there has come like a wave. I think we've had about 64 uh, referrals into that we've put into the groups and things like that that have just come through phone calls and texts. Yep. Whereas we're not so, it's not so process driven. It's been a little bit relaxed because we've had yeah. to be. And yeah, it's, sure. The thing has happened, hasn't it, from it? Well, we've all had to work differently. Obviously, you know, I've, I've got, I have got people into work and I, you know, I've never met them. So I, I've got a kind of trust instincts over the phone. It's, 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 been, it's been bizarre, but people have been getting on with it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a real humbling experience. And I just want, that's probably one of the reasons I wanted to come and just sort of say hello to everyone, but, but really recognize some of the work that's been done by people. It's been amazing. It absolutely has. And it's like, there are so many unsung heroes out there, aren't there? What can you actually do to it? to say, do you know what, I value you, I appreciate you, the world is a better place with you in it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, every single guest that you've had on in the last 15 weeks, mind-blowing really, you know, when the when our backs are against the wall, with the camaraderie is just so strong. It's a beautiful thing that's yeah. come out of a, a crisis situation. Yeah. Well, we, had, we, had a, we have a thing in the morning now, we have a, like a quote of the day or something of motivational, uh, uh, thing to say and mine the other morning was um, tough times will pass tough teams will continue yeah so oh, goosebumps. you can have yeah. that that's a gift i'll throw that in for free for Give free no <laughs> charge whatsoever no and just andy just on the, the back of that then what can i just get your expertise opinion your expert opinion on what do you think is going to happen to <laughs> employment in the future I think I think we're 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 going to a very dark time, and um, right now that there's less vacancies now than there was in the 80s. So, and someone termed the phrase recently because obviously I follow employment. That's what we do. <coughs> that um, there's going to be a tsunami of unemployment. So we've uh, we've got to work a bit harder. We've got a little think a bit more out the box. Uh, it's, it's some difficult times coming, but as long as we, as long as you know the teamwork, and as long as we continue the way we're doing, I think we'll be okay. It's just going to be harder, but there's no lies about that. I'll just to be upfront and honest about it. So when we are speaking to people, we're saying, look, this is this is the score, and this is what we're going to have to do to achieve your goals. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah, Andy, yeah. because. You do a lot of um, your job around communicating and you have to like weigh up. The community have, have been hot <clears throat> tonight and, and what they've said is um, they would like to see you given an honorary fearless speaker badge. So really? Oh, come on. <laughs> no way, no you way. You have to really? wear that when I see you and I bring it in on Friday. No, well, well, I'm, again, I'm humble. Thank you very much. It's very kind. Oh, that's a fearless speaker badge. Thank you very much. Am I blushing? I've just realised I've got a lot of cheeks. It shows a lot of gels on, on this camera. It's not, very, <laughs> it's not very kind to me. I'm a lot thinner than this, uh, but I think I'm blushing. <laughs> but, no, but I thank you very much. It. I appreciate that. I want to say thank you so much for coming on, Andy, and I know thank that you. give give your mum our love as well. Thank you.
So I, I, I'm going to, I am going to go, but can I just wish everyone the very best and hopefully we'll see you all soon. All right. Thanks, Andy. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. See you. Thank I, you. I, um, I think we should get a bit of the word for the week. I was thinking the same thing. Come on. Um, we, we'll have to meet this uh, Mr. Mick Fleming. I'll just put Andy on, on mute because um, he's, he's still there. So I think we can. Yeah, he's, he's gone, gone now. So. Okay. Mick. How's it going, Mick? It's going all right. It's very busy, uh, but it's going all right. Yeah, it's going good. It's going good. We're doing all right. So I was sort of thinking uh, before I come on what to talk about. And I thought about, uh, you know, with addiction and life and everything else and like the kind of the separation between the spiritual and the physical and the teachings of Jesus are that they're not separate. They're one, they're together. And I thought, do you know what? When you're in recovery, we kind of almost try to separate this stuff. And what it does, it, it makes us kind of guilty and we can't attain. It makes it impossible when they're separate. Because I can't be this spiritual being. And I go to meetings and people talk really nice and I just think, you dick. Do you know what I mean? And I can't kind of be that. But when I go, it's all one, that like Jesus teaches, it's one, it's the same thing. I thought, yeah, I can have some of that. And that's what makes a difference. So I'm going to read a little bit, uh, it's only a small little bit of scripture. When I say scripture, it's just a little bit from the Bible. And it's when Jesus goes and gets tempted in the desert. So what's happened is, He's just been baptized by John the Baptist as Jesus. So he's gone in. So basically, God said to him, this is your job. This is what I want you to do. Are you going to accept it? And Jesus has got baptized. Yeah, I'm accepting it. I'm having it. I'm going for it. So he gets baptized. And then the little bit I'm going to read is what happens after. So here we go. Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. Jesus ate nothing all the time and became very hungry. Then the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, tell this stone to become a loaf of bread. But Jesus told him, no, the scripture says people do not live by bread alone. Then the devil took him up and revealed to him all the kingdoms of the world in one moment in time. I will give you the glory of these kingdoms and authority over them, the devil said because they are mine to give to anyone I please. I will give them all to you if, you if you will worship me. Scripture says you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only, said Jesus. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and he said, if you are the son of God, jump off. For the scripture says he will order his angels to protect and guard you, and they will hold you up by their hands. So you won't even hurt a stone of your foot. Jesus responded, the scripture says, you must not test the Lord your God. Then the devil, when the devil had finished tempting Jesus, he left until the next opportunity came. So what that's about is the physical stuff that we go through, as well as the spiritual stuff. So he's saying he's hungry, so he's saying eat. This is the stuff, but you've got a choice. You've got a choice of what you do. He's showing him all the, the wonders. He can use his talents, right, to have all this wonderful stuff. But he's sacrificing what God wants him to do. He's, he's throwing it all to one side just for the sake of all this glory. But when you think about the last one, where he says, throw yourself off, he's asking him to play God. He's asking him to be God. So these three things are physical. And Jesus answers him with scripture. Every single time he refers it back to God, he refers it back to God, he refers everything back to God. So what we're saying in this is God is the answer. So we look at it of like uh, evil or the bad things in the world. What they do is they make things separate. 
So it's, it separates, kind of separates it. But when we come together and we understand them as one, there's a massive power mm -hmm. in it, an absolute massive power in it. So I'll just describe this really, really quickly and really easily by just saying, uh, there were a time when I, uh, I wanted a job, wanted this job really bad. And I got down on my knees and I prayed every day. And I want this job, I want this job, I need some money, I want this job, and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And I never got the job. No jobs were, were, were coming. And someone said to me, have you applied for any? And I said, no. It's when the two become one. And then when I applied for one, God honoured it. And that's the analogy. And we go through our life living like, I just want you to take this addiction away. God, just take this addiction away. Or I don't really want to do all about it. Or I don't understand how to do something about it. And I kind of think about it, this bit of scripture means like, so we spend our time, so I kick people's door in, go and hurt them, tax them, take stuff off. Well, now I'll kick doors in for Jesus. I've still got the personality. I've still got the stuff. I'm going to do stuff that helps others. So it helps me. And if I start separating it, that's not for me. That's not that. That's not that. Nothing gets done. So the word of the week is, if you're getting on your knees and praying, very, very nice. But get off your knees and do something because that's the prayer. And that's the message today. Yeah. The prayer is the action. So kick doors in for Jesus. Brilliant. Tax everything that's evil and share it and get free. Just Thank on you very that, much. what's happened is... Um, Emma's I just, friend. I just want to just just before we do that, I just oh, no. want to say what that brings up for me, Mick. When you say that is faith without works is dead. Exactly. A bit of James going on there, love. A bit of James. Yeah. <laughs> I like well, there's, James. There's, a, there's, a, <laughs> yeah. there's another one, um, and I forget I forget his name. It'll come back to me. But he says, at all times you should preach the gospel, and if necessary, use words. Yeah. So that that's kind of poor, really. So. It's your, it's your actions. Yeah. But what, what we do as human beings, seriously, we separate. So if I say to you, what's spirit? Most people will say, oh, it's all floaty up there. But the teachings that we're saying is it isn't. It's here and now, real. And that's... Just on that, Mick, Yvonne has been motivated and she's had a think about it she's plucked up the courage to come back and share some some of her um uh, story mm. with us so hi everyone hi yeah <laughs> right i've ended up like in purple rooms i've just gone through a traumatic time um i've ended up i was living in the worst area ever i could have moved on to i ended up going downhill being up there my head just went and then I met a girl, she wanted to said she'll be friends and that because that's all I've asked for, a decent friend. And then um, I've ended up being a friend with her for a couple, only a couple of days off. But And then on the th one Thursday we was out going some stones, I still had a pipe <laughs> and we met this lady. Got out of jail and then... <laughs> On the first, nice. yeah. <laughs> so on, we met him on the first day. So she started seeing him, but he wanted to see me. But I wouldn't get with him. So, we, so I left them to it. So on the Monday, I've gone round there to have a smoke and that. We had a smoke and that all day and that. And then like he started getting paranoid, and then I he started his Talk and then next minute he's whacked me around the face with a claw hammer, slit all my face off. And I've ended up with a seven inch metal plate, 48 stitches inside outside, 10 screws. I've got another operation on Wednesday. And then while I've been in hospital, I've got nothing now. I've got no claw, I've got two outfits, and nothing. It, my landlord's chucked everything. People have shown me on Facebook, they stuff me stuff all outside my house. So, but I've got this operation on Wednesday now, so my head is just a bit done in over that. So I'm trying now to 
But four, but it's hard. I just keep getting dead emotional when I think about it. He's in court now on the first, so hopefully he's gonna get a bit of time. Can yeah. I just say, Yvonne, that I love you dearly, and we're gonna get some support over to you there on Wednesday, so you're not on your own. And you've done amazing this week. You have done amazing this week. I saw you Wednesday. And I just said, stay clear, stay focused. I'm in court stay as well, aren't I, on 8th of 12. One yeah. of them was trying to get some clothes for me. So I'm not even, I've got two pair of knickers that you give me. I know, <laughs> but listen, awful. you're going to have more knickers, right? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> me... I've got nothing. I've got you what have you have? Listen, listen mm-hmm. honey, I have got, like, so Mick, Mick has kindly donated £120, so we're going to go out next week and go Primark and get you some clothes and get you some toiletries and give you this badge. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And then when you go to court, you can wear it and just grab hold of it if you need some strength because you're yeah. strong, you're bold and you're beautiful. Yvonne, you've oh. done amazing this week. Oh, it's hard for me to use it to talk, but it's like I can't even shut my eye either, guys. You know what I mean? Look, I can't blink. I can't smell at the moment. All my nerves and all my muscles have done it. It's started going up again. I'm swelling upwards now again. It's gone right of fear. Yeah, but you're in, you're in on Wednesday, aren't you? So what you can do is when you come back on, when you come out, we're going to have a before and an after. We'll do a before yeah. and an after. Because I was saying, we're hey, that's a day. brilliant idea. That we'll have a before and after. Yeah, we will. Yeah. Yvonne with a sm- a swollen face, and Yvonne without a swollen face. Yeah. yeah. Nice togs. And you know mm. what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. And I think yeah, you've got a really powerful story. But what strikes me the most, Yvonne, is is the strength that you've got. Oh. You know, and, oh, I've been strong through. I've tried to be strong. You are. Yeah. I, I spoke to my mum for the first because I've had no phone and someone lent me a shitty phone. So I've just put my sim in that for now. And nothing else got. So they've been a bit worried, my mum and my daughter, my grandkids. Yeah. I always get my head together and I don't want to go down looking scruffy and all that. They don't know. I've lost everything yet. Do you know what? Do you know the most. I suppose um powerful thing what you've said there is that you were just looking for some friends. Yeah. And, uh, and that's all that's all as human beings we were built to be in relationship with other people. But you don't have friends in this game, they're all social. Yeah, they they want to be your friend when you've that, got drugs. Yvonne, yeah. You have got friends and, and you can build good friends. That's what this is about introducing yeah. to some good people. No, actually, yeah. you know, the, the friends that you, you've had in the past from that scene have given... Yeah, yeah I want to come on with some of these other groups on there as well. Rich in your life now. Yeah. Are you listening, Yvonne? You're getting a lot of love from the community here. So, yeah. you know, these rooms I keep telling you we're going to go in, these are the kind of people that are in them rooms. Right. So you've got Beth there saying you're not alone anymore. You've got um, Sarah Oxborough. Oh, Sarah, I love Sarah Oxborough. Uh, I think you're doing amazing. Michelle Hanley saying that they'll be thinking about you on Wednesday. Keep doing what you're doing, lovely. Jackie Scott, Yvonne, keep going. Oh, you're getting so much love. Oh. Beautiful thing. And they all know who you are before they've ever met you because because emma's told them so so they're just yeah. uh, up in arms to meet you. yeah yeah oh, yeah i do is get your new knickers on and tip up yeah with them. i want some new yeah. shoes. i've got one pair of shoes to me then mm-hmm. right well we're going to sort that out but she's on her way into the room she's on her way she's on her way i totally believe in you yvonne and i love you dearly <laughs> I love you too. Thank you. I'll be down. Sure, I'll be down. I'll be down next week. All right. Okay. We've still not got to our Karen and Lana and Daniel. Emma. Emma Pete. Yeah. Oh, Sarah. Hi. (laughs) She just wants to say something. Please speak, um, Sarah. Yeah, I just wanted to say something to Yvonne. What you know? I was listening to the story there, and um, she's probably touched me. Yeah. Yeah. She's probably touched me. Do you know what? She's in my prayers. 
yeah. God will be with her and she's doing so well. You know, and coming on here and sharing yeah. what a strong woman she is, whether she knows it or not. She's beautiful. So just keep going, Yvonne. Oh, Sarah, that's lovely. Thank you. Oh, Yvonne, can you see that? <laughs> yeah, I'm man. Mute, mute now, that's what I'm range. talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Real friends. Real uh, people. Did you hear that? Yeah. Beautiful. Thank yeah. you. I'll take you over one day to meet her. Yeah. <laughs> I will, yeah. Be brilliant to meet people that are normal, not people that are on drugs and that. Yeah. <laughs> well, She's not normal. normal. It's not normal. What's normal in what do we call normal? <laughs> None of us are normal. What's you're normal, normal in this life? Don't use drugs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I don't do drugs anymore. <laughs> anymore. I have no. <laughs> doesn't get me smile back. There you go. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, Honestly, Yvonne, the, the comment section has blew up yeah, the amount yeah. of love that we're getting yeah. out there so you're in everybody starts some prayers and you've got some of our guys who are, there who are gonna, you now. Just, just gonna stand shoulder to shoulder with you Not thank you yes in, in, in your world yes. all right thank, thank you. you right listen Ron, i love you but i'm putting you on mute now Let's move over to Karen. Karen, I've been itching to have a convo with you, Karen. Oh, go on then. <laughs> so, um, you've, you know, it's been a while. It's been a few weeks now since you was on here, hasn't it? And uh, it has. I looked at. We have this like plan, a weekly plan, and we can populate the agenda for for weeks in ad advance. And I looked at it this week just to to check up who's coming on and it's Karen Brown and it was like oh brilliant yeah yeah and good Karen, well, I must say Karen and Bob because we love Bob too yeah Bob uh, Bob we've not met Bob yet <laughs> Bob's invisible. it's an invisible entity isn't yeah it? yeah, we've but, just yeah. Bob. and he can all I know I must admit no I'm telling you now Karen and Bob are on every single week relentlessly absolutely absolutely yeah and that comes back to your word of commitment so you know commitment we never waver whether it's um personally and professionally and i know i'm on here tonight about blackpool but you know our commitment for our offenders our lads in the prisons our people detoxing it 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 never wavers and we've just got to we just keep fighting for you know services that are resilient and sustainable and almost empowering people so um, if i can just take up some time and i really appreciate you um inviting me one is just to focus on blackpool for a minute uh, and i wanted to give you some statistics and i'll tell you i hate statistics um, i'm not about figures i'm all about feeling but I think these statistics really set the scene for Blackpool and every one of these will make you feel, even though they're hard facts. So I'm just going to rattle some off because then I want to tell you how we're going to respond to some of them. And then I'd like to ask a couple of questions to sort of say, so how are we going to do this then? So Brilliant. firstly, I'm just going to rattle down these because if you, if you hear the thoughts behind them, they're quite painful. So, um, highest drug, this is Blackpool, this isn't uh, the prisons. Highest drug related death, double than the next highest in, in the whole UK, which is Burnley. So, 58% increase deaths, death on death, death on death. That's horrific. Heroin crack users in Blackpool, higher than the national average. So it's 23.5 in Blackpool and it's 8.9 in, in England. So we've got a problem. Treatment budgets fallen 72% since 2016. That's a problem. Uh, most deprived of three of the 317 local authorities. So the most deprived, nobody else beats us. Second highest children living in deprivation so 30 percent of the children in blackpool live in deprivation and the lowest life expectancy for males in the country 
every single one of those is painful and it, it is you know it, it's real um so the commitment our commitment your commitment everybody on this tonight commitment is around what the hell do we do about this this is massive this isn't just about drug treatment services solving this this is everybody solving this so i think with those hard facts behind and this word of commitment um we go back to covid and covid really has brought us all together so much more than we've ever been before and it brought the services of blackpool together so much more than they've ever been before um we've contacted all of our clients and we've got feedback from 300 clients and every single staff member and the thing that's come out of covid for them is around um an acknowledgement and insight into their own um mortality and it's almost made people wake up a little bit very appreciative of two week scripts so i thought oh, i wonder what that's about then surprisingly what that was about was around going to the chemist and about being punished for getting medication that the due and about being um labeled as an addict and meeting other people there so the chemist i didn't realize this so you know this has been a learning for me i didn't realize the chemist was such a trigger for so many people so there's the chemist bit the phone calls and the zooms what's come out mostly was about the human approach about our key workers and this has been a learning for us all our key workers aren't focusing on people's drug use they're focusing on the people and absolutely what we should be doing but because of all those other pressures you're having to focus on what you need to do to get the job done um so almost focusing on people's well-being and how are their families um also talking about people wanting um specific days for themselves and this is one of the questions at the end so people who were struggling really with alcohol wanted to come to services on a day where there was just people who were struggling with alcohol. So that's a question I want to ask you about really. As a response, really, we've got to focus on getting our environment right, mostly now outside of services. Um, we've got to really energize our peers in Blackpool. Um, I want peers, every time you turn a corner, I want a horizon peer. Yeah. Um, I really want to look at our family focus, really want to stop talking about drug use, I want to speak about well-being and I want to stop people dying um, and so almost it's, it's a bit of a call to arms really so we can focus on non-fatal overdoses, we know that if you have a non-fatal overdose you're most likely to die the next time. We can look at nasal naloxone, we can look at more naloxone but actually this problem is bigger than them solutions, it's like well and so what because if you're not on if you're on your own using it doesn't matter if you've got nasal naloxone or whatever you've got does it it's it's too late so i think that focuses a response so these are my thoughts the next the redesign and we're working well with the commissioners the commissioners in blackpool are awesome absolutely awesome and the staff have been incredible and are ready to change and i think covid has shown us that by we can change um, so we're looking at redesign with clients directing us, um, one-stop shop, bringing in benefits and mental health into our service rather than people having to go to different places. I'm really fighting for a supervised injection facility, but I think there's only a few of us at the minute, but um, anybody who knows me knows I'm going to get that. <laughs> so we are going to get that for Black Pill. Yeah. Um, and we want an engagement policy, not a DNA policy. So there's a lot of feedback from our clients around um, yeah. DNA policy. Yeah. And it was like, wh why is everybody hung up on the DNA policy? I, my view was it was around engaging, about keeping people safe. But actually, it's been used as a bit of a whipping tool so i want an engagement policy so if people aren't turning up why are they not yes so um i can talk all night and i know time's short. so these are my questions if you could have a little think about these questions one of the statements that came through that has, has sort of resonated with me was focus on those who want recovery not just a script so that's a statement yeah. so as a service provider, I'd like to say to everybody on this call, how the hell do we do that? How? How do we how do we do this? How? Um, there's another question about saying about so we've had we have generic um, 
clinics or sessions where people are invited to meet the key worker, etc. What has come back from some of the feedback is they wanted specific sessions for homeless, specific sessions for probation, specific sessions for... And I've always fought against categorising people by what's going on for them. But actually, a lot of our clients are saying that's what they want. So there's, a, there's an emotional like, oh, my God, I don't want to label you against a, well, this is what you've said you want. So what does anybody else think about that, about that kind of? And the other thing is, what do families want? So what do they need and how do we get that to them? Because I find it very hard to engage with the families. We've tried family groups a couple of times and it almost ends up with a few, two or three families who meet, have a cup of tea and we do everything we can to support them, but it, it sort of dwindles away. So I think based with starting with those hard facts and ending as it always does with me with a lot of passion and feeling and oh my God, yeah, it's almost so how can we do this for Blackpool? Because if we get it right in Blackpool with those statistics, we can get this right anywhere. Karen, just just on the questions again. Yeah. What, what are the specific questions you want answered? Right. Can you say them again. The clients have said focus on those in recovery, not those who just want a script. Yeah. So my question is how? Do we do that? The other one was some clients have asked for focus sessions regarding their situations. Um, and it doesn't matter if I'm opposed to it or not. If that's what people are asking, then we'll do it. But so they're wanting a homeless clinic, probation clinic. And this is clients that are asking for that, not us. Yeah. Um, so almost what do people feel about that? And that is a feeling question. Yeah. Um, and what do families want so we can provide it? Yeah. OK, so we can also get the uh, questions on the, the Lancashire Forum page as well. So anyone that's. Yeah, that'd be lovely. The Forum Facebook page. Yeah. But anyone who's grabbed a hold of them questions around the redesign in Blackpool, get your comments in the box. Yeah, um, please do. Please. Because co-design is the way forward, Andrew Powell is saying. And David Simpson, service user, in St. Anne's is saying the only help he ever gets is here, on here. So we are, I know there is a cohort of people out there that do need targeting and outreach yeah. and my learning yeah. through all this. You know, it's and Claire really, you know, Claire really has come into Blackpool for us and, and, and done started something that we've really struggled with around our um, FY4 U. And I know you had the other one last week. Yes. Um, and they're going to help us. They're a small emerging group now, and obviously they're going to tap into you guys, which is okay. incredible. Yes. Um, but almost the people we do engage with are people in our service. So I know we have Nikki Plum and her team, and we get people who are entrenched with not being in service. Yeah. We just we're not getting it right. There's an acknowledgement we're not getting. We're getting it right for the thirteen hundred who are with us, but there's yeah. there's more that aren't with us. But yeah, how do we that. how do we move on to get yeah. it right now? Well, can I? Because I know you champ, but I've got some stuff here. First of all, I want to acknowledge Claire yes. and her yeah. Yeah. as yeah. on point, enlightened, loving. Absolutely. And she sent through a consultation that I, I was in a, a meeting for Collective Voice, and that's a, a strategic group that lobby parliament, get involved with Carol Black Review and such. And there was a certain amount of feedback that had been received um, and the perception was very negative, I would say, of people in prison. But I was able to say, well, I've looked at some consultation and actually yeah. the prisoners in HMP, Garth, Wymock, Manchester and Buckley all, 67% yes. of the people who was asked are saying they feel quite safe yeah. and they're looked after and they're not getting taxed or they're not getting the canteens robbed blah 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 so when i said to claire do you mind if i share this with co colleagues claire was like absolutely go for it pete and, and i just i just think from a partnership approach that's just enlightened yeah it's yeah brilliant in it but yeah so what it showed me was as an organization 
you're really interested yeah, yeah. in catching the voice of the service users and i just think that is is where it's at it should it should be the the norm um but but i think to answer the question about how i feel in terms of categorizing people i, mm. I understand your mindset i get it but you but, have to sometimes but we've got to meet people where yeah, they're, they're at, at. yeah i know i know where they're at and then show them where they yeah. can be because like, that's the chain that's the it's an inside job right you know what i mean by that yeah yeah then, uh, internal beliefs when they see yeah. the possibilities yeah. and, and we see it playing out in the purple room Oh, I am sorry that I'm on a, a positive light rant, darling. No, I'm just <laughs> I'm told that that positivity. But but I think you know, um, I love you, and I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, get a room. I know, but you know, I think one of the things I'm excited about is how Claire is creating an opportunity for us to expose all this all this yeah. networking yeah, all this yeah. positivity to people who are in prison because we know there's a lot of them in there who don't know about this they don't know so that that's not just in prison and this is why you need to categorize this is why like black pill yeah. so so this is now i was of the same mindset before covid right and i really was until i i we had to come on Zoom and as a cohort of service users that haven't got access to Zoom, so we had to target and outreach specific people. Some come with a lived yeah. experience, some were in the rooms that don't come with a lived experience. So we needed to just part them because the service user voice around the specific service, and then there were some that needed to go into service. So although I was with I would I wouldn't have thought that six months ago around stigma and categorizing and compartmentalizing. Whereas now, I think we do need to compartmentalise the population, and and you know we've got to create spaces focus where, groups in there as well as like where voices. people feel like they belong before yeah. we can have a look at what they believe. Now, if you're if if you have have only got one set of clothes and they smell really badly, yeah. and then you're introduced to a mutual aid group where everyone in there is on fire doing well, you're not going to feel like you belong. Yeah. But when you know other people have got this, you feel like, oh, yeah, I can fit in here. And that's why in the Lancashire User Forum, we've always said it's a level platform. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. You know, yeah. it's yeah. for everybody and anybody who, who's affected. And we fought hard and we've had some critique over it. We fought hard to, to maintain that ethos about it's for everyone. We're not going to say, oh, you can't because you're a bit high risk or you're a bit vulnerable. No, you're in, you're part you're of it, in. you've got, because first of all, people have got to feel like they belong before mm. we can have a look at. Okay, what I'll take doing. that. Yeah, yeah. I'll take can, that. Then we can address how they behave. Just yeah. a few comments from the community, Karen. Um, Andrew Powell said the service users have to be at the front of any future interventions and recovery. Yeah. I'm really saying medically assisted with treatment is still needed, full stop. Yeah. Um, um oh can i come back to that it wasn't so with that comment around not people who are on a script people who are on a script are on a script for a completely decent and an absolute reason they're not that's not a second it's it's it was people it was a comment that had come back that had resonated with me so no people on a script are on there because they need it and they and they that's the right thing and there's a lot of people still out there that still need to be on scripts so absolutely no yeah uh, Andy again at uh, peer mentoring and peer support through the gate is also yeah. widening people's education to changing and reform in the perception on drug use. So that comes into Claire really saying about getting these on loop in the prisons. Um, and you know, there's there's many more comments that can happen if we can get the questions on the, the look page as well. That'd um, be amazing, thank you. But I love I love as well about you know Horizon and I love Karen and Bob full stop, but <laughs> I love that you can say, do you know what, we're not well, getting Delphi. it right. Because you you represent Delphi, don't you, Karen? I, I'm employed by Delphi and, you know, Delphi's all around kindness and, and empowering people and, and trying to get it right. So, yeah. I love that. I love that. They say, you know, do you know what, we're not getting it right. Let's just ask, let's go out there and let's get it right. And we get it right by getting it wrong, don't we? And yeah. Yeah. And then to, you know, recreating, recreating. 
I think. I do have to say, though, you know, as a sector, we have got some great people who work in it. And I'm amazed, absolutely I'm amazed at how, you know, how difficult it is a job because we work with people. I mean, those statistics you was just mm. you, you were saying effectively Blackpool is at the top of the league. Yeah. But not, yeah. not in a good sense. In, in a, yeah. you know, when you look at it in measuring, in weighing other parts of the country, mm. it's, it's like Blackpool's underperforming, it's under resourced. It, there's something about if you can, if you can make it work and improve it in Blackpool, you then you can do it anywhere. Yeah. So, and the same for Burnley as well, isn't it? Because, and, and, and I suppose. The East, but Blackpool is a unitary and it's it's confined, isn't it? There's a lot of people go to the sleepy seaside village to get clean and end up on a crack pipe. Yeah. And end up staying there, you know. Yeah. And you have got a lot, you know, you, you have got a lot of people. And it is, and I, you know, I hold my hand up to anybody who works in services, mental health services, child protection services, everybody, you know, and, and I definitely hundred percent to our horizon staff it's just relentless it's like standing under a waterfall it's relentless well you've got like people like tony jones watching and i know lorna is in the house and i do want to yeah be now because lorna is saying Anne's and does a lot of great work over in saying Anne's, and i know that tony's saying it's been that way for years and it has but the beautiful thing is i wanted to get it right so how do we get it right well, can guys? I, Comment. Yeah. can i because julie cahill's picked up on your point where she says I we do. get it right by getting it wrong but yeah. there's something about creating a culture where getting it wrong is okay because when people express um examples of getting it wrong and then us as practitioners or service providers are, are abrasive to that they, you know we defend it and don't say okay well how can we learn from how we get it i mean i heard you coaching someone before around this same example yeah. the worst thing that can happen is when somebody expresses criticism about an area that needs improvement is to try and deflect it without saying okay let's create some dialogue around how we've got it wrong without personalizing yeah. Yeah. it and we've got hundreds of successes we absolutely have we've got a million case studies we could say but that's the million that's it's right for and that's amazingly brilliant but yeah. we want the ones that it's not right for yet yeah the entrenched this is exactly where i'm at at the minute karen you're on my page yeah. this is where i'm this is where, can i just bring lorna in because i know lorna is a silent she is a silent assassin it's like she's she quiet she's got so much to give just look come on missus come in because they just you mentioned something about the alcohol and i think it's really important i know lorna works with a lot of people over in saint anne's that are saying the same thing aren't they lorna oh right good Around the yeah uh, definitely definitely the uh the clients that we've got over here the alcohol um i mean most of ours have all relapsed sadly in saint anne's um they feel left out actually yeah the, the, the feel just, just let us know the feedback from the forum the other day about um, the alcohol uh, in St. Anne's. You know, the guys, they, they've not had phone calls, they feel a bit left out. It's, it's uh, we, had a, we, had, we had a guy, I know that he's been watching, and, and he was scared to say it while the, when the people were there, but afterwards it was um, uh, that he'd never had a phone call. Um, that he, he, this guy has mental health, he has really severe mental health, and it's a, it takes a lot for him to come onto groups. And he shared to it all that he's had no phone calls whatsoever. Um, he's been changed support worker, which frightens him. Um, the support worker was going to ring him, but hasn't rung him. And he's also been told that if he does not go to groups, that the, the new support worker could put him on a daily script now this has panicked him because it cost him 20 pounds a week to come down if he had to go on daily this guy has been six years he's six years clean he's just on a script he's done every single group and he feels threatened that if he doesn't do the zoom groups or go on to any of the groups again that he could go on daily scripts 
and I'll, Can and I I'll ask follow. Is it a Blackpool client? I don't want to know if it, is it a Blackpool client? Aunt. Oh, okay. Yeah. Aunt, yeah. <laughs> no, no, but, but there's many stories like that from our clients. Absolutely. Many, many yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wrong. Absolutely wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and, and you know, I want to give a shout out to David Simpson and Lee. Because when we get engaging, they've been engaging with us. We, you know, we make uh, daily telephone calls. They've come up on Zoom. Uh, Lee, one day clean, fantastic. He's been engaging by texting. You know, um, so our guys in Saint Anne's probably need a lot of help. If I'm honest, they do feel very left out. You know, it's a small place, very I left. Out. Say, Lorna, I just want to say that Penny Broad is in the house. Yes, Penny. We don't want to talk about you. Yeah, yeah, we was, we yeah. talking about you. Yeah. Penny is saying very true. Saint Anne's has been left for years. Nice one, Lorna, for standing up for Saint Anne's. She does all the time. Penny, you need to get in the service. She's a foreign Penny Brody. We was watching house. a film and there was a, an actress on who was the double of you, Penny. Gorgeous, uh, you know. That's what I was saying. <laughs> but can, I, can I just say what that feedback that you've given there, Lorna? Yeah. It's not unique across the UK. There's examples of that in yeah. every, every single area. Yeah. What, is, yeah. what is unique and different is that we've been given a contract to capture those people and make sure those examples get flagged up yeah. straight away yeah. so yeah. solutions can be provided. Now, that's, mm. from my perspective, a unique approach in terms of how that's managed yeah and you know because because i know the first thing you guys do is embrace that and then flag it straight mm -hmm. up so yeah you know, they, they can get it right yeah. and lorna's in the flash meetings as well so that's getting fed in isn't it lorna that's it everything's getting fed in yeah. <laughs> we need some loners then yeah i know i know can i just say as well oh i love to see you too penny uh diane seville is saying Criticism is a very harsh word. Can you just mention, maybe speak to that for Diane? Because I don't think that's what you meant. Critic, I don't know what I, it was, what I said. I don't know. Maybe. I think, um, in what sense? So that's for Diane. I don't know. I'm therefore not criticism, PER, but it's just my opinion, which I thought I was entitled to. Absolutely, you are, Diane. Mm, yeah. Absolutely, you are entitled to your opinion. I don't. I, don't. I think sometimes criticism is, um, is needed. We need to embrace criticism as well because that's how and not personalize it. Yeah, I don't I don't mean criticism for the sake of you know hurting or harming. I mean criticizing for the sake of healing and helping. Because uh, if something's wrong, we need to address it yeah. and and we need to know about it. Sometimes and I I've, I've gone through this journey. When when I get criticized, looking at Emma, I Feel That's an I feel personally attacked and then I'm closed to progressing mm -hmm. as a human being. So these are the like these these are the some of the discussions we have, don't we? Yeah. And I, I will say I feel criticized. And when I feel criticized, I'm closed to growth. So can we have a, a so I get it, I do, I understand it. Can I just say as well, um that Lorna, you're the best. You have helped a lot of people. We love you. That's coming from Michelle Handley. Um, so you you know you love that there, Lorna. So Karen, we can get them answered for you. We can get them on the that'd be brilliant. Thank you. Blog page as well. And your service user rep that was on last week. I love yeah. him. We need to get some time in with him, don't we? Yeah. And but we need to do it and and properly do it, don't we? Yeah. Because um, it is a great, it is a great thing what they're doing. Yeah. So it's like we've got to put some time in the diary, and it's great yeah. that we're helping Greater Manchester develop yeah. a platform. But we've got Blackpool, Blackpool just across yeah, the way, and the same, mm -hmm. we've got a bit of just around the corner. Um, so Karen, uh, strengthen those links. We'd really appreciate. That. Yeah, we'll do that definitely. Yeah, and respect to everybody on here yeah. watching. Yeah, Bob, our love. I will do. I will. Oh, I can oh, hear him Bob. shouting at kids. <laughs> oh, oh, Bob. Oh. Okay. Uh -huh. Let's just bring in our little nice timing for Lorna's um, entrance then. My absolute star team player, 
please may I introduce? Drum roll, please. Well, just hold tight, Daniel, because we can see you there. Mm -hmm. We know you're a bit nervous. This is your first week doing the spin-off, mm -hmm. innit? The the competition. So so hold tight, Daniel. We'll get into you, mate. So let's just bring in our Lorna. Lorna. Hello. <laughs> Hi, darling. So we're talking Hello. about commitment. And I, the reason I wanted you to come on is because this woman has not only been committed to changing a way of life when you got your, your first part-time job, you was committed to growing, and then COVID's hit, and you've been committed to getting onto Zoom with new technology in a new environment, and now you're leading the charge on teach each one, teach one, teaching other people to lead the groups on Zoom. But also you've done, you've been committed in the community to getting guys fed. You've started doing socially distanced walks in the park. Just tell us a little bit about what you do because you make a difference in St. Anne's. I don't care what anybody says. I absolutely know you do. Tell us a bit about that, Lorna. Well, I'll tell you a bit about it, but what I've got to say, all this is done, you know, it's it's not my doing. I give You always know I give God the glory because my strength comes from faith. My strength comes from faith. You know, that sometimes, you know, it's hard. It's, it's, it's been hard. I will, I will say it's been difficult with getting, you know, I've got 47 clients, you know, that I ring daily, you know, every day um, and, and getting food, food to them, you know. That's been very, very difficult at times. But my commitment is to the strength, you know, is that I make phone calls. I ring you. I ask for help. You know, and, and, and these guys have been getting fed and, you, you know, and, and, and these guys, you know, on the phone and, you know, they're going through terrible times, a lot of them. Most of them have got mental health, you know. So we thought, right, what can we do? And I, I asked you and said, like, you know, have we got all geared up? Can we go, like, have a, a group in the park? And so up to seven people, you know, every Monday. Now the, um, the one that's... I have to try and find another day where I can fit fit it in to do another one, which they like face to face. And it's about, you know, it's just like a here and now, their thoughts and feelings. We have sandwiches. And I need to share this with you last week, but you know, there were seven of us and we're all talking. And I see this man passing up and down with a dog, you know, this dog. Yeah. And I, and he was coming back and coming back. I went, come and join us, come and join us, right? And he sat there, he was eating his sandwiches, and he didn't even know what, what what we're doing. And he heard about he heard somebody talk about alcohol. And he said, I have a problem with alcohol. Yeah. So he started joining the group and he's meeting one wonder. Yes, Lorna. That each one teach one. We've got Mark on board. We've got Mark on board who's gonna lead the group next week. Yeah, brilliant. You can have, you know, so there's a lot of things happening. And where's but, you Tony? Know, pardon? Tony. Tony is well involved. Tony, Tony Jones. He's well involved, Tony. He was on his first group on Friday. Looks like very powerful. Uh, Lana's dropping in and out there. Um, he's getting Tony. He wants to. <laughs> Lana, your internet. Oh, Lana, your internet. Your internet. Keeps going. What's happened? Your internet was going in and out there, so we missed a, a little bit of, of what you said. But I just want to say, Lana, that um, oh, Leanne, Leanne Moore is saying she loves you, Lana, amazing lady who helped us so much the last few weeks on Zoom groups. You've been my rock. Messaging, phone calls, Zoom, nothing is ever too much. You really are an angel sent from above. Michelle Hanley is saying that you've helped her with food when she took a pregnant daughter in law in, and our walks have helped her immensely. Tony Jones in the house. God, she fixed me. So you've been taking Anthony yeah. to church as well. Um, and you, you check in on more than 40 service users a week. Lorna, you're absolutely an angel. Yeah, but you know, you know where it goes. It's not me. I, I, I've got, I've got, 
something powerful above. I've got God above. Put it that way. So it's not me. Not me. You are. You're a force for good, and it's really evident that you've found a way to channel that energy you get from God into other people's yeah. lives, and it bears fruit. Uh, I know yeah. Diane Seville has just made a comment to say tonight she's made a decision. She wants to become a service user rep. rep. Yes, Essential. Diane. Awesome. Yes, I think Diane. You, you would make a top rep. So, Warner, I need you to pick that up as well in the comments. So, keep your eyes open for Diane Seville. Seville. We will yeah. be connecting yeah. you in with the user, uh, service user forum training. Daniel. Can we have your attention, please? Because I think you've been waiting all night to, oh. to take over. Our wingman, Glenn, is oh, on holiday. But a well deserved break. Yeah, he's having a break, isn't yeah. he? But yeah. He's yeah. tuning in. He from, actually was before, yeah. Yeah, he's, he'll be tuning in. He'll, he'll be somewhere in. Um, he's gone to Torquay, uh, Torquay, Torquay. Torquay. Newquay. Newquay. So you've come from down south, up north, and Glenn, you've done like a, a switch, haven't you? Yeah, so um, this week, well, this week, yeah. let me just share this. Yeah, let yeah. me just share this. So I started my new job this week with Red Rose. And yeah. Um, yeah. so I came up to Lancashire on Friday. <coughs> Um, I'm itching at the bit to get back. I've had to come back down today to Bedfordshire to do this. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm itching to get to back to work. I mean, I see what everyone else is doing and, um, you know, I just want to get back, but I don't know when we're going to get back yet. So, uh, yeah, good on you, mate. You're doing great. So, Taking over from Glenn, and you're going to share. Last week we had a winner, didn't we? Yeah, I don't know who last week's winner was. I haven't <laughs> quite done my research on who that was. <laughs> it was Jack Waring. Jack Waring. Jack okay. in the Purple Rooms won the um, £20 voucher yeah, last week. So um, we forgot to, to get him to acknowledge that. Yeah. He definitely knows. Yeah, he does. I he think he's got, he's, he got, he's, got his, he's got his his prize. But this week, um, you're gonna do the wheel of fortune, aren't you? Yeah, so um everyone that liked and shared last week, I've put them into a wheel and I'm gonna spin it now. So, so bear with me. I'm gonna share the screen. Yep. Can you all see that? Yeah. yeah. Yes. All right, let's have a drum roll. Oh, no. Yeah, Michael. Michael, Mike Weirden. Michael Weirden. No, that is <laughs> Not our very own Mike Weirden, is it? Yeah. Is that our very own Mike Weirden? Yeah. Fine. So should I spin it again? Oh. Well, go for it, yeah, because yeah. Mike would say, roll it on, roll, roll it, it on. on. I know yeah, Mike could say that. It was. But we'll have to double check it is not another Mike Weirden. And if it is a different Mike Weirden, you've won it and we'll commit to it. Yeah. So spin it again. Yeah, well, it's all, well, it's all right. We can get another one soon. Yeah, we'll we? start. Oh, it's a bit intense, this, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Denise Holland Radcliffe. Denise. Ooh. Right, so Denise yes. Holland Radcliffe. Radcliffe. Did we know her, Lorna? I, I know the name. She oh. could be on my. Yeah. So Denise. your job now is to track down Denise Holland Radcliffe <laughs> and let her know that she's won a £20 voucher. And... Um, well done, Danny. Well done. Well done. Yeah, well done, Dan. You've done awesome there, Danny. <laughs> yeah. 
it took a bit of, it took a bit of time practicing but yeah it's um it's just getting used to computers isn't it yes yeah yeah you did amazing talk to lorna about that i'm telling you she's now, she's now a whiz she's now a whiz okay let's just so denise well done let's just bring in homegrown yeah out. yeah Brilliant. yeah that'd be great okay liam take it away guys so they're, you, they're having a jam lot. The muted. They're having a jam without us. Come back. Yeah, you're on. <laughs> sorry, guys. I can see you done. jamming away there without us. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just you give give us all guitars and we sit down. We can't resist. We can't. Uh, we can't help ourselves. No self discipline. No self control. But then we've all heard that one, haven't we? Um, <laughs> So do you want us to do one, uh, play one quickly? Absolutely. All right, just, I want to thank everyone tonight. Um, we, we came back on, tried to figure the sound out a bit, but uh, it's been really, we've been listening to some of the people speaking and so on, and it's, yeah. um, you know, as ever, humbling, moving, and difficult things. You know, we live in one of the poorest areas in the country, well, the Northwest in general, and, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a lot to do always, I think. But it's great to hear people trying and asking questions about how we do it and how we do it better. Uh, we're going to finish off with um, one of um, another one of uh, another one of ours. It's another one of Steve's actually, and uh, we're just kind of having a bit of a, a warm up there. Hopefully, we've got our sound a little bit better for you. We've been trying to figure that out. So here goes. This one's called Walk On. Not bad off. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. We're good.
brilliant. Honest to God, guys, you're my new favourite band. Me too. I absolutely love that. Walk on. Everybody, walk on. Brilliant. Walk on. Brilliant. Yeah. Liam, you know me. You know I'll be over there oh. singing, thinking I can. Guys, what a great way to sign off this evening's show. Uh, Brad, Daniel, Lorna, Home Homegrown. Thank you so much, guys. Stay Thanks blessed. Thank Thank you. We'll, um, we'll see you all again next week. Same time, same place. Love you. Love, Love you. Bye-bye. Well done. Bye, everyone. Fabulous. Fabulous.